Yes, welcome back. Asandia, my next guest, I met online. I got a mail saying that the first woman to run for Calabar municipality in Cross River State had achieved XYZ for my magazine, Today's Woman. And I'm like, I mean, a woman in Calabar running for office? Can I get her to Lagos to come and be part of this show? And I sent a mail back, you know, I just don't want to talk about her on the magazine. I want her to be part of this show because I want people to see that there are some young women out there who are doing stuff. So it's my pleasure to welcome Asandia Hogan. It's nice to have you here. Thank you. I hear you ethnic women are very strong people. <laughs> tough, tough, tough women. We are. But then you did run for office at 28. Yes, I did. And you ran for? A councillor of my ward. And what happened? Um, I was disqualified on the morning of my election because in Cross River State, you have to be 30 and above. But I'd been They didn't through, tell you until... I'd been through all the screening boards and they told me that they were not going to disqualify me and they would leave it up to the party hierarchy to disqualify me because I was the best candidate they'd had in years. And um, they felt like it wasn't in their place, so let the party take a decision. So what happened between, that was in um, 2009? And 10. 2010. Yes. So for seven years, you didn't try again until now? No. Um, I, I, ser I served the party. Uh, and this is the PDP? Yes, PDP. Mm -hmm. I served the party in 2011. I was the secretary for the Central Working Committee for the uh, campaign, you know, the Jonathan's first election and mm -hmm. all the elections. That year, I was the secretary for... Um, the, com uh, the committee in Calabar municipality that year. Um, after that, you know, I've been running my business and uh, going for political uh, meetings. Um, and as a woman, one of the things that you do too, I had a baby. So um, I couldn't possibly have a baby and be in the thick of politics at the same time. No, but so, you, were, I mean, your mother was a politician. Yes. You know, she was one of the power brokers I hear in, 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 in your state. So yes, I would think it to be an automatic thing for you to want to run for political office. Was it that way? Not necessarily, but I also don't think that the apple fell very far from the tree. Um, but I, I didn't necessarily run because my mother was in politics, mm -hmm. but I was exposed to politics at a very young age. Um, my father was a very fearless man. Um, he took on the military governments and the rest of it. Um, and my mother was a very strong politician. Um, so, yes, I did follow in their footsteps somewhat. What, why I say that is, I mean, how does somebody get up and say, I'm going to run for office, I'm going to get into politics, given the fact that a lot of people say the political terrain is not friendly, not only for men, worse for women? Um, I think if you know that you have something inside of you to offer, which um, I, I was... Um, I was um, I was fed up of being fed up, um, so I finished. <laughs> I finished. I finished university. I came back to Nigeria, um, and um, I didn't like the things that I saw. And, like, um, I mean, the corruption we see, um, the things, and I, I mean, for example, local government politics. I believe should be simplistic. The constitution states the things that he states for. I like to use this example because it sort of makes everything fall into place. Things like the graveyard is the, it's in the constitution that the local government should take care of it. The cemeteries. Yes, the cemetery. So you see an overgrown graveyard. You don't need to be Einstein. You don't need to have, have had, you know, a PhD to know how to maintain a graveyard. So those simple things are not done. And I think to myself, why is it not done? It's not done not because we don't have the money, not because we can't do it. It is because you don't have a willing person to do it. Or is it because the, the electorate itself is, igno is ignorant? Um, the electorate, to, to an extent, is ignorant because a lot of the times, most of the electorates that you come across, not everybody, but a lot of the electorates expect handouts. And so you have politicians that come to them every four years or... Uh, like in my state, which is three years for local government, three years, handover, rice, and the rest of it. And people think that's it. Um, Are you doing that, though? No. And you think you're going to win? Um, yes, I think I will win. Um, I, would, I don't do things in half measures. I wouldn't be here if I didn't think I wouldn't win. Um, 
even if you're going to give rice, the point I, I'm, I'm making is that, that that shouldn't be the be all and end all. You should be able to, if you're going to give rice, give rice. Because I wouldn't lie to you that there is hunger in the land. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to give rice, give rice. If you're going to do X, Y, Z, do it. But don't just do, don't do just that and mm -hmm. disappear for three years or four years and another three years you come back with rights again. Aren't you worried about the fact that people say local governments are redundant in Nigeria right now because the state governors, you know, aggregate all of the funding to themselves and so what's going to happen to local councils? I personally think that that's one of the main problems with Nigeria. We, a lot of us, um, local governments and some states sit and wait for um, allocation from the government. This is the reason why you need quality representation in there. Because you don't have to sit and wait for allocation. You can actually generate your own income. If you use your brains and you work with people that know what they're doing, you can generate income. So yes, the allocation is your right. That is your due. So take it. But you can't just sit back and depend on just that. It, it, it wouldn't work. It doesn't work anywhere else. Mm -hmm. But is it, is it true, though, that um... The uh, local government chairman have to be endorsed by, by, by the, you know, by the ruling party or by the government? Um, in politics, the structures. So, of course, you want, um, even the president wants to work within a certain structure and you want to know that you have loyalists. Um, that is, I think that goes... That goes across board, even in businesses. You want to know that, you know, there are people that are loyal to you. Um, in the sense of the corrupt sense that it comes across in Nigeria, um, it does happen. And that is the reason why you need people like us to change the face of the local government. Mm. Because the local government shouldn't be there for settling. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And all of that. Well, these nails, the hair, <laughs> The spree, spree, <laughs> then the female. Doesn't it, you know, kind of like jar you, the senses of your electorate? Would you like me to speak effort to you? Make anything you can So what does that mean, though? I could speak effort with you, but you wouldn't understand what I'm saying. Okay, okay. So, but don't you, don't you, don't you feel like they might look at you and like this one doesn't belong to us and things like that? Who belongs to you? I'm an Ifuku man. Um, I come from Cross River State. I've lived all my life in Calabar municipality. I know the people opposite me. I know all my neighbors. All my neighbors know who I am. Um, most of they them can trace your family tree. Most of them don't even mm -hmm. call me Asandia. They call me my pet name at home. Which is? Um, Makamba. <laughs> so um, my nails or no nails, uh, hair or no hair, has no bearing with my abilities and what I can deliver. But tell me, what's the most daunting thing about about being a female politician in Nigeria today? First of all, aren't we telling you you're too much for local council? Yes, you, I mean, even the things like, you know, your nails, your hair. I can't imagine that uh, the gentleman before me was told, oh, what about your beard? What about your shoes? <laughs> or what about <laughs> the colour of your tie? Mm -hmm. You know, nobody, nobody says that. But because we're women, uh, peripheral things are looked at. So, oh, yes, she's speaking, spray, spray. Fortunately or unfortunately, I had an edu education elsewhere other than Nigeria. So if I need to speak this paper to get money to come, to come to our local government, then I'll do that. When I go to the bank, the spray sometimes works. And if, you, <laughs> and if it works with international donors and all those people, great. Um, I also don't believe that you can't be feminine and be in politics. I like fashion. I make no apologies for that. Um, it's your business too and it is what I do. So I make no apologies for that, but there is no reason why fashion and politics or liking yourself or trying to or look, good. look good should be exclusive to each other. Mr. Okay, Mr. okay, I hear you. I'm gonna introduce another young woman who has seen a lot in politics, but from the side of advising people. And then uh, we'll come back. Thank you very much, Asandia, for we sharing We should ask that gentleman about his tie as well. I will, I will, <laughs> I, I should, I will. <laughs> so I'll be right back if you don't go away. Thank <laughs> you.